Hello. Well, I'm going to talk to you today about buildings, my world of real estate, and why I think it's changing dramatically. And let me start off with an anecdote of something that happened to me a few weeks ago. I was standing at a coffee counter of the shared workplace where I work, and this lady comes up to me, I don't know her, and she says, Hey, aren't you that real estate broker? So I said, so sorry, um, real estate broker? And I looked like I just swallowed something very sour. And it's just, really, real estate broker? Um, you know how I'm talking about, right? They are the professionals that help you with one of the most important decisions in your life of buying a home. It's a high-cost decision. You don't do it every day, but you pay for it every day. You may be stuck in it for years. And it costs a lot of time. It's very emotional. These people, real estate brokers, help you make that very important decision. And why, if this decision is so important, does it make me feel ashamed being associated with one? So I was still fumbling at the counter and my cheek was slowly getting red and she tried to comfort me by making it even worse because she said, no, I read about you. You're a really successful real estate broker. Didn't you win an award or something? And by that time, anger was taking over the emotion of shame. I did not graduate from technical university with all A's to 16 years later being called a real estate broker. I was a director of a construction company when I was 25. I take risk, I struggle, and I do all that in my career not to end up being seen like a real estate broker. And I, I am sorry because are there real estate brokers in the room? <laughs> and you know, no hands, one, but there probably are, because it's like there are a lot of them and they're everywhere. But my problem is, I just don't want to be seen as a real estate broker. Because the way I view them is like they have gel in their hair, they drive scooters, and they have way too much smooth talk. Way too much smooth talk. And somehow they're an iconic uh, version of how we look at the entire real estate industry. We see people thinking and looking at them and think, why are they still around? Well, and I think that's the point. That soon, times are changing, and soon they will not be. And to explain why, I have to take you back to one of my early classes at university. And I had a British professor, and he taught me a very important lesson. And the lesson was about Fred. Well, meet Fred. This is Fred the dinosaur. He's here today, I brought him on the stage, and the professor said he put Fred in the room and he asked us the question, what does Fred in the average real estate company, what do they have in common? And then he went on and he said, they're both very, very large, impractically large, slow moving animals. They'll eat anything they can get. And notice, he said notice, they have very tiny, tiny, very tiny little brain compared to their massive bodies. And, and by that saying that, he didn't mean real estate brokers in particular, but a whole industry. It's a massive industry where there's a lot of money going on, with a lot of power, and we use so little intelligence. So it's a dinosaur business, and the business is changing dramatically. So thinking about Fred and everything that's changing, it actually brings me to uh, giving you an insight into the view of our dinosaur business, the real estate market in Holland. Giving you a slight bit of feeling. We have some problems. Our market is a little bit sick. Problem number one, we have a lot of empty space. When we look at office space, 20% is vacant, empty boxes. And this is about 10 million square meters, 1,500 football fields, empty. This happened all over the years, and there's even more to come. And it's due to the financial crisis, but it's also due to new ways of working, ICT, it changes the labor force and everything. 
but also that real estate has become a, a, a thing of trading. So there's too much supply, not enough demand. And we forgot that real estate is about the people. So that is the first problem. Second problem is we're stuck in our homes. One out of third households in the Netherlands who has a home has an underwater mortgage, which simply means your mortgage is higher than the value of your property. So if you want to sell, you have a loss. You have to pay for it. And we don't want to, because we want to save it for our pensions or other things. So I'm sort of puzzled here, because you might think, if there's such a big gap between the people and the buildings, aren't real estate brokers ever needed than ever? Aren't they the big connectors between the buildings and the people? The connectors between the humans and the stones? And um, yeah, frankly, they did very well until the last of, the last of end century. But then came the internet. Information became transparent. I can't find anything on the internet. And we're looking for the right information. And when it comes to the right information, and we talk about the real estate industry, and the honesty of information, ooh, things are getting into the small talk again. Because every property we sell is like amazing. We have a room with a view for you, <laughs> and it's probably based on a top location. But there might be some room for improvement here. Get real. Times are changing. We need real information. And why we need it is because you pay a lot of money for it. Whether it's your home, your office, you pay for it every day. So we have to search for the right information. And this doesn't always go, go right. Let me give you an example from my own personal experience. By the age of 30, I bought my very own home in Amsterdam. I was very proud. Because when you buy your first home, and in my case, on my own, it's like a big step. You feel like you've grown up. I took a real estate broker to assist me, to help me find the house. He measured every corner of my house, he answered all my questions, and eventually he did the deal, and we drank champagne, and I was happy. I moved in, and literally the first day, when I worked, I came back from home, opened the door, got in the house, was tired, it was about eight o'clock, put down my coat. I sat on the couch and I just took a deep breath, like, oh, wow, this space is now officially mine. And then this happened. One, two, three, four! Almost every day, I see the same face. I'm broken things to do, it's the attitude. If you can see yourself, you put you on a shelf, you'll find a massive bag. And you feel sorry for me now, don't you? Because, meet my neighbor. I had a 100 kilo plus neighbor, activist, pot smoking, jobless, and he loved to play heavy metal during his sometimes weekly depression. And somehow, I really would have loved to know. And you know the funny thing is, somebody knew, but it was not in my interest to tell me, but I just put down a mortgage of 300,000 euros on my own. And of all the things I should know of buying a house, I would have really loved to know. So when it comes to what you should know and what you know when you do these big investments, and we all do, what do you want to know? So let me give you another example. This is a picture taken again in Amsterdam, July 28th this year. Uh, the neighborhood is funny enough called the river neighborhood, but that's not the reason why this happened. We had very heavy rainfall, very heavy, and it happens about three to four times a year, and it's due to changing weather. And the problem in this neighborhood is that the sewage system cannot handle the overload of water. So the government needs to do some investing there, but it's not done yet. So if you have your room here, your house, and your bedroom is based on the ground floor, I think you should know when you went to buy here. I think you want to know that your bedroom is a river. So all these information, this is a picture from Twitter, and it's shared by everyone. So there's all kinds of information being shared about locations, places. And so I'm wondering about this gap between what we know and what we should know. So we're sitting in the office thinking about it. And then a client called me, an investor, 
in offices. And he said to me, Marlon, can you help me with renting out my vacant office space? So I said, no, 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 no. I'm not a real estate broker. I don't do these kind of things. But he said, no, you, I don't want you to do it the traditional way. I want to make connection to the people and see how I can make my buildings come alive. So I said, okay, I can think about that. So first step we do, I said to him, we take off all the for rent signs, you know, the big signs on the wall saying for rent, because it's stupid. It doesn't do anything, no connection. And then I started asking friends who, entrepreneurs, who were having an office or went through the experience of searching one, you know, what is your advice? What did you miss? What did you do? How did you operate? And if I would design the process today, what, if, what would you have wanted? And they all said a bit the same, similar thing. They said, it's just, I find a lot of information on the internet. And then you have the real estate industry giving me all this smooth talk. And I just don't trust him. So I said, what do you want to know? I said, I want to know from other people what they think. Other people who work in the same building or in the neighborhood. I want to know if it's cold in there, if it's nice atmosphere, good coffee, if they're great people, nice companies, because I want to work in a community. But main of all, I want to know how the other people think. So I told this to a friend of mine, Chris, who's working in social technology. And he said to me, and he asked me, he said, why is there no rating system and review system for officers, such as a hotel rating or a restaurant wait rating, where people using buildings actually review them, and it's an open platform? And we thought, yeah, why? Officers sh should be no different. There's much more money involved than in one hotel booking, so it's important. So very simple, together we did. Chris and I decided to make the connection and build So Buildings. And So Buildings is a platform where we have a social way to connect the buildings and the people. And we do that through a rating system. So people give a star to the building, a figure, a four out of ten, and they give reviews. So for instance, for this building, they say it's a nice atmosphere, it might be a little bit too cold today, um, uh, did you like the coffee there? So they give you all kinds of feedback. And people looking for an office, they can check these reviews. And they get the honest talk instead of the smooth talk. And you know what the thing is? The owners can be happy as well because they're with the 20% office space vacant and they want to know why the people don't come to their buildings and they need to improve. And people are already linked with social media and they talk a lot. So we, we bring that into the system and we combine everything that people say about buildings. And then you see that the building comes alive because buildings are communities, but just with a roof on top. I told this story and we started building it in the industry and a lot of people in the real estate industry said, oh, no, 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 no. But what if my building gets a four out of 10 all the time? People complained. And I said to them, people don't complain for the sake of it. They complain because they want you to improve. If you have a restaurant and you get a review as a chef, a four out of 10 all times, you're a bad chef. You need to improve. People don't eat your thing. They don't eat your buildings. So it helps you to improve. And also people are honest. So if they're happy and they had a great day in the building, they will tell you as well. So you get both. And then there are people saying to me, no, 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 but I never give reviews. I never do those things in the hotel rating. It's too much work. Well, some people do and some people don't. But the people who don't, they usually check the reviews because we all check the pool. When you book a hotel and you book it with a pool and it's your holiday, you want to know for sure if the owner says it's a good pool or whether it's under renovation. So if you don't want to do the reviews, you check them, and that's okay. So my message is, get real estate. Technology is making everything transparent, the way we view buildings and how we value them. And then coming back to Fred, the dinosaur, I decided long ago, I didn't want to be a dinosaur. I don't want to be in a dinosaur business. I want to improve. I want to improve buildings. I want to make it better. I think in my current time, technology, internet, it's a perfect way with my reviews and so buildings to give you more information for things that are important because buildings are important and they're about the people, not just about the money. 
So for Fred and all the dinosaurs in my industry, I just want to give them an emergency entry into this new world. I don't want to attack them, but just give them a wake-up call. Because if they don't change today, people like me and others will disruptively change their whole industry. Thank you.